Hi guys, it's Cherie from Paper Pieces and Leftovers. So today I am doing the Sitting Pumpkin Skunk from Cadoodlebug Designs. I did not change any of the sizing in Quick Cut Design Space, and I believe the width is 7.998. It's actually on the pattern in a white chalk gel pen, and I can confirm it later on in the video. So I will go ahead and list off all the colors as I use them of the paper and ink. And the white paper is textured. It's by American Crafts. It's just regular white. And I'm using Memento ink in the color London Fog. I'm going around the gray or the white pieces with gray. You don't have to do this. This was just something I decided to do. And I actually went over it again after it dried before I started gluing it together. I wanted it a little bit darker. Now that first piece that I held up, it's the piece that goes on his face. I cut it out the way that it came in the pattern and I noticed that I had to cut it out again but mirror it, which means flip it because it was facing the wrong way and you'll see when I use my cosmic um, shimmer glitter glue that the little sprigs didn't line up but then I found out it didn't matter because the little hair piece covered it up but anyhow so it doesn't matter if you mirror it or not because it's going to be covered up on the top so my green is textured also by American Crafts all of my paper is textured so if I don't mention it it's because I only use textured paper except for my white and black I use smooth on the eyes and the mouths. So that green is American Crafts and the color is grass. And now all of the rest of my inks will be my Catherine Pooler and this color is grass skirt. The reason I speed up the video is because I do voiceovers. I don't have voices in my head. I do voiceovers on this, even though I have to process what I'm going to say as I'm doing the voiceover. But if you guys heard the stuff in my background that I watch, you guys would think I am crazy. I watch murder mysteries on Investigate Discovery, and I'm actually re-watching all eight seasons of Dexter to watch the new one that was just released. I was not a huge Dexter fan when it was actually out. 10 years ago, 8 years ago, I don't know, it was forever long ago, and the girls at work were always raving about it, and I was just too busy with work to get into it, so season 8 I started watching it and I was hooked. I binged it, while it's been so many years, I'm re-binging it, that way I can watch New Blood, and even though each season is specific to one segment, it's... Things that I didn't remember what happened to Deborah or Quinn or whatever. Anyhow, you guys would hear that in the background with me trying to talk. And I watched those just to kind of make time pass by because this actual recording, when I melded all of the video segments together, it was almost an hour and a half. And speeding it up, I got it down to 29 minutes and some change. So this orange color is textured. Now, this is the only paper that is not American Crafts. This one's actually Basil, and the color is Apricot. I know that there is American Craft colors close to it, but this was just the one on my mat that I grabbed to cut out. My ink that I used is also Catherine Pooler, and it is Orange Twist. I am actually doing this piece for a giveaway, which I've already posted on my Facebook and let you guys know that there was a video coming to accommodate the piece to help all of you guys that are new to paper piecing or just put it away for a long time out of frustration, not knowing what to use, what to do. And I just kind of figure if I can help one person, that is enough of an accomplishment for me because crafting is a mental getaway. It's an escape for a lot of us, whether it's just from work life, personal life, health life, whatever the case be. 
So this is brown um, cardstock, and the color is Truffle by American Crafts. My ink by Katherine Pooler is Over Coffee. You guys can pause the videos and screenshot it. I'm also going to list the color of the cardstock and my inks in the comments for you guys, just to make life simple. So what I did with those is... After I inked them and I set them aside, you guys will see um, on the piecing portion of the video, which is at the end, that I actually numbered one, two, and three. You can do left, middle, and right. This is my finger dauber case. This is my glass cleaner from Target. It gets all the ink off my fingers, which I'll show you guys. I have no more green on my fingers. See? Gone. It's ammonia-free. It's really easy on people's lungs. My daughter hates the way ammonia smells. She gets nosebleeds very easily. And we find that this is one of the best brands of cleaners, and we get it from Target, like I said. So now here is the main color for the skunk I used, and it's American Crafts textured paper called Graphite. And the ink is going to be Catherine Pooler's Blackjack. You only need to do the outer side of the arms because they're going to lay behind the body. You don't have to go all the way around the arm if you don't want to, but if you choose to, that's fine. Now his foot, I actually inked the toes, but only the top, so you couldn't see where the toes lined over. Because the toes for the SVG pattern actually lay over the foot base. So I only went around, you know, the edges that you can see. I didn't go too much onto the actual paper. It's just so my edges, when they lined up, you didn't see a lighter gray versus the light black. And this piece here, I messed it up. I redid it after I finished this video segment. I didn't wipe enough of the ink off and it left too much of a line with my pom-pom. So I redid it with less ink afterwards. And this is the piece that's gonna cover up that white middle part that goes down his face that I was mentioning. It's the little hair flip. And I went through all that trouble of cutting out that second piece down his face for nothing once I realized that the top didn't have to line up but me just because this is the first time I put it together I wanted to make sure everything was anatomically correct and this is his ear I'm just going around it I didn't realize what it was so I did the bottom of it you don't have to do that flat part on the bottom because it's going to be tucked behind the actual head when I do my voiceovers even I do them in segments that way I don't lose any of my recordings I've done it a handful of times when I record when I'm tired sometimes I don't pay attention to that little button that has the check mark and I've actually hit the back button or it's almost like the refresh but it's the back button um, thinking I'm just going to go back to the main screen before the recording and I've actually lost all of my recording so that's why you'll hear breaks and sometimes my voice will be louder or lower than the previous section and it'll just randomly increase or decrease I apologize all right so this is his tail and I'm going to go around it a couple times. I actually wish I would have went in farther with the ink, uh, but that's just me. And I did this video as a request because they had asked how would I do the skunks when I had posted the 90% flash cell from Kadoodlebugs. And this is just my interpretation of how I would do it for my scrapbook. It's not an order, it's actually, like I said, the freebie, and you, some of you guys have already seen it posted on my page. If you haven't entered and you want to enter, feel free to head over to my Facebook, which is under Paper Pieces and Leftovers. Now this is his face, and those little sprigs of hair on the top of his head are what made me crazy with that white stripe. But I did not know, I should have been looking a little bit more carefully at the picture on my computer screen. 
instead of what was in front of me. I actually laughed at myself and probably slapped my forehead after I realized I cut out the piece again just for fun. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Cosmic Shimmer Flake Glitter Glue, which I did a video on using this for acetate. I have the link on that video on my YouTube. I will go ahead and put the link on this as well in the comments for that glue. All I do is put a little drop on the back of my pieces for placement purposes. This is not to glue them down permanently. It is a permanent glue if you choose to cover the piece. There's that white piece that made me nuts. And that's where when I flipped it over, I realized that, oh, it cut out the wrong way. But then I hadn't had the hair in my hand to figure out that it covered anyhow. So back to my Cosmic Shimmer Glitter Flake Glue bottle. The comments will be below. All I do is I add a little dot to the back of my pieces that I want to actually hold in place. And it's perfect for tracing. It's perfect for getting everything lined up how you want it. And you just pick the piece off once you're done. See, I pulled it right off. But it'll hold it on for me well enough where I can trace anything. Or if... I have to line something up and I'm not absolutely sure how to line it up. This allows me to play with it and finagle it that way it's where I want it. This is not a have to. You guys don't have to do anything the way I do it. I don't want to sound rude saying that. This is just over the years I try to make my life easier. Now I trace my eyes with the Micron pens and I use the 02 and the 005. I got them from Amazon, they came in a pack. And that was my art glitter glue in a fine line applicator that I got from Amazon. If you guys need the links, I can give those to you, it's not a problem. So his eyes are still just kept in place and I just picked them off. They stay until you pull them off. It comes off fairly easy. I know on the muzzle though, I hadn't let it dry all the way and I actually tore the base cardstock a little bit. Nobody will ever know. You guys wouldn't know if I didn't tell you. It's just a little bit. So I did decide to give him eyelashes. Even though they don't show up prominently, I still know they're there and it's just habit for me putting eyelashes on everything. If I don't use my eyelash stamp, I kind of try to keep them as even as possible. And I was having an okay day with my tremors. So they actually went on smoothly for me first go. I didn't have to redo them. So now with the pan pastel, this one I use on darker pieces grays, browns. The peach I use gray and for everything else the darker colors I use black. That is a false eyelash glue tool. I've put the link in some of my other videos. If you guys need it let me know. Um, you can use a paintbrush, a pom-pom, a q-tip. It's up to you. This was just some random tool I found at Hobby Lobby. I fell in love with it. I told my mom I didn't know what it was called. She said, hey, send me a picture. I have Google image or something like that. And so mom helped me find what it was called. And I found it on Amazon and I ordered a pack of 100 of them. And I did forget to show you guys the color I use for the tongue. And that was Bubblegum by American Crafts and Catherine Puller's do si -Do. That is the same color I use for the ear pads on my Franklin Bears. So there's that infamous white piece that I cut out again to make it go the right way. Oh boy. So you're going to glue your center stripe down first. Before you put your eyes on, that's going to be the first piece that goes down. I did almost make a mistake later and I will show you guys what to correct and don't do it my way that I did in the video, but it was already glued down and I didn't want to have to go recut out the whole base and I was able to save it. We still make mistakes even though we've been doing these forever. 
So after you get your center stripe put on, then you're going to put the eyes down wherever you trace them. And the tracing does help so you know where to place them. I don't glue over the um, cosmic shimmer glue. I just went around the muzzle instead of in the middle because that was where that little sticky glue paste was still and I believe it was his face that I tore the base with. And it was just a little piece. Same thing with the nose. I went around just the outside because my um, cosmic shimmer glue was in the middle. So now this is Pan Pastel Titanium White. And I showed you that because that was actually dust. When it got delivered, it was destroyed by Amazon. And having broke more eyeshadows than I can imagine dropping them them being in my purse whatever I knew to pour rubbing alcohol on it and then press a napkin onto it that way then it would turn into a solid instead of a powder and then you don't put the cap on you just let it dry overnight and it works perfect so here's another technique I learned from Sarah she has the Facebook page Peppermint Cactus. She and I became friends when she was on the design team with me on Marjorie and Designs. And she told me when I asked her one day, how do you glue all of your little pieces down and not make a mess with the glue? Especially for somebody like me with trimmers. There's the sizing. So the width is 7.998 and the height is 9.268. Sorry for being all over the place. So back to Sarah and Peppermint Cactus. She said she puts glue on her finger and drags the tiny pieces through the glue because you can control it. So that's what I do. There's my pumpkins. They're all labeled. I did run them through embossing folders, just the top piece. They're labeled 1, 2, and 3, but I also put L, M, and R for left, middle, and right. And you'll see that um, for the gluing process. That way then I didn't have to figure out what went where. So here's his tail. I am gonna glue that down first. And what I did is I lined up the notches at the top of the tail. And that's how I knew how far this, the tail was gonna slant. The reason I wrote the sizes on the actual base was so everybody could see the sizes and I remembered to mention them. I know that Sometimes I'll mention them and sometimes I forget, so I just figured it was easier to put them there. So there is the right pumpkin, and that's actually number three. And there's where I made the mistake. Put the stem down first after you do the tail to that pumpkin. Don't put the pumpkin down first. And so here I started gluing the leaf and realized I didn't put the front part of the pumpkin down. So I wiped the glue off and I just sent my leaves, set my leaves to the side. And then I went ahead and started gluing the wrong leaf again, thinking, oh boy, there was a moment. So I added a little bit more glue because it had just sat for just a second, but art glitter glue dries very fast. So you're gonna put the stem on and then the base of the pumpkin, and then the top piece of the pumpkin, and then the leaves. Now, there was quite a few layers, and these are the Zots in small. I got them from 12 by 12 cardstock shop. I fold them in half, and that is so my leaf doesn't fold or bend over all the layers to reach the base. And I don't want it catching on anything and pulling off ripping off because that'll ruin your whole piece and this is just another trick that I've learned over the years but the other thing you could do is just take a little piece of cardstock and put it under there cost effective so this other pumpkin this is pumpkin one that goes all the way on the left and you're gonna glue the stem to the back of the base after you glue the top um, portion of the pumpkin onto the base of the pumpkin you just turn it around and on the bottom is a little groove for the corner when I scoot it up when I realize that I'm out of frame you'll see that there it is it lines up perfectly with the edge of that 
um, base. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add the leaves in the same way I did the other one. But this one here, I tried to stay on the pumpkin and not so far off, just that way it had a little bit more support. My pieces are no way by any means perfect. I make mistakes. I'm not 100% fast at these. I take my time. And luckily I do catch most of my mistakes and some of my mistakes are very fixable. Now I placed his face over his ears before I glued the ear pads down just because I wanted to see how far down the ear pads needed to be. And they almost need to be flush with the bottom of the ear base. That way the face covers the cut bottom, the flat bottom part of the ear pad. And it just ends up smooth. So here's going to be another trick that I'm going to show you guys. If you guys have a white gel pen or a white chalk pencil, go ahead and get it in arm's reach. So I glued the stomach together. And now here's where the com cosmic shimmer comes into play. I'm putting that down that way where the face will be. That way I can make sure that my arms and his stomach are going to fit under it and none of the tops are exposed. While I'm waiting on that to dry, I'm going to glue his toes on. And I'm going to do both feet in order to let that glue dry. And I know I put a little bit too much on of the Cosmic Shimmer because it tore a little piece off my base, which is fine. The face and head is so thick that it's not going to affect my piece at all, you'll see. So then the white pad goes on the foot under the toes. I put the toes on first to make sure that the white feet pads were low enough because I didn't want them too high. And once again, this is just the way I do it. It's just for entertainment purposes, really. I actually watch a few people while I'm scrapbooking if I'm not watching Murder Mysteries. And it's sometimes I pick up different things or I see a pattern that they're doing that I want to do because I have it and I just didn't realize that it was that cute and I forgot about it. So here is pumpkin number two or middle. It, it's up to you guys if you want to do it my way with uh, the writing of them. But it's so I don't mix up my pieces because they're really easy to do when you have five pumpkins. And if you write down the middle of the front and the uh, of the base and then the back piece of the top, it works great. Then you just match them together and glue them. And the only reason I didn't glue them together right away was because I embossed them and then for the video. So his face is really on there, and I should have knew the glue was wet, but that's okay. So that pencil or gel pen I told you to grab, this is where you're going to use it. After you get his body and his arms lined up, I went ahead and set the pumpkin in front just to make sure nothing was seen, and I trace. This is how I make sure when I glue my pieces down there in the same place that I had them when I placed them in there. It's all going to be covered so nobody will know. And I know this is probably something really minor and stupid and you're going to go, God, I never thought of that. I didn't either. There's where that little piece of paper came off. All right. So I'm going to glue his arms and I'm going to fit it right into the little areas that I traced the white um, chalk pencil with. That's a Prismacolor pencil. I got it from Hobby Lobby. And I get them when they go on sale because they're like $3 per pencil. I'm looking at the time and we're already at 24 minutes. I have four and a half minutes left of the video. All right. So his arms are going to get glued on and then his body just gets placed right on top of the arms. And I went over the back with my bone folder. That's a vinyl squeegee. I use it because of the felt. It doesn't tear my paper. I can give you links if needed. Let me know in the comments. Now that middle pumpkin sits right on. Here I'm going to go with my Zots again. They come in packages. I just throw them all in one Ziploc because I use them so often that I don't have to grab the individual packages. I can just grab the size I need. Now, because of how many layers 
are underneath that pumpkin. I slid those under there to make, and I folded them in half, I always do, because I want the height. I went ahead and just pushed those under the pumpkin to make sure that he wasn't going to end up bent or indenting downwards. And that way also the feet, they'll sit a little bit slanted. I don't know how to, uh, where the big toe is on the inside by the pumpkin in the middle, that part's raised up and then it goes f more flat towards the outside. And I love that because that's just, it made it easier with the embossing of the pumpkins for me. Now, before you glue the feet on, glue the hands on. I caught myself there as well, and I just remembered that part. I don't know what I was thinking, but anyhow. I know sometimes as I get close to the end of gluing pieces together, I get so excited that I don't pay attention to the way I'm gluing my pieces. So I glued his head down, and I realized that the end of that stem was a little too high and this is trial and error. I wanted it above his face. So either don't glue the top part of that stem or glue it down farther on the back of the pumpkin. That's really the only advice I can give. Now goes that little wisp of hair that covers my OCD with the pattern, which that was my fault. And this is just a piece of twine from Hobby Lobby. It comes on a roll. Now I'm using Tombow Aqua Mono Liquid Glue, Amazon. I use that for all my bows just because when it dries, it dries clear. And I actually changed the bow out. I remember I went with a little bit smaller and I did make three of them. That wasn't hair I was pulling off my pieces as well. It was pieces of that twine. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and add highlights I probably, though, if I make more of these, I'm not going to add all the white gel pen. I'm so used to using so much gel pen. I actually liked it looking at it now with the toes, not having the white gel pen on them. So I'm not sure if I'm going to go in and pull them off. No, that's too much. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I actually went crazy with the gel pen, but I wanted it to stand out a little bit. And looking at it now, I see that the chalk was enough. Here's where I swapped out my little <clears throat> twine bow for a smaller one. And now I'm just going to add the highlights and that's it, guys. I hope you enjoy the giveaway piece that's what this is and it's not anything I'm obligated to I just chose to you don't have to do all this extra it's just something I like to do just to make it stand out and these were the embossing folders I used I get them from Amazon eBay Etsy it just depends some of them come in packs and some are singles. I know these ones, the confetti and the circles, came from Amazon. That one came from eBay. But have a good day and I will see you guys later.